tonkatsu, chaco, monaka, jumbo, and wild swans. What do those three things have in common? Well, they're all things I look forward to when I go to Japan. And since I'm not a chef, let's focus on wild swans. Wild Swans is my favorite like retail leather brand. Um, they just have very clean items. They use very high quality leathers, clean machine stitching, and their designs are simple, but the simplicity is really kind of like elevated by their use of subtle curves. Uh, they also have really, really nice edges as well on their items, which is rare and uh, more like production type leather goods. So every time I'm in Japan, I go to their store in Ginza. I actually have one of their tongue wallets made from a uh, Baker bridle. It's one of my favorite things I've ever bought. I go in there, I ogle all the wallets and just kind of look at how they're made and uh, kind of just try and draw some inspiration from them. So for this next few series of videos, I think I'm just going to pick some Wild Swans items and do my best to make them as close as possible to the originals. I think it'll be fun. So I think copying items and selling them is not cool, but trying to copy an item made by somebody else exactly, I think is a very good way to push your skills and learn new skills and new construction methods. Um, because I mean, like, as a leather crafter, you kind of get set in your ways of doing things and you kind of have your, your own processes that you always nail and you kind of fall back and rely on those. So it's good to just get out of your comfort zone and try something new. So in an effort to get out of my comfort zone, I'm going to start replicating Wild Swans items. So I'm gonna start simple. Let's start with this simple card wallet. Just gonna go on their website, get the dimensions of the item, and that'll give me a good starting point to draw up the pattern on CAD. All right, we got our pattern all printed out on cardstock, and it's time to scribe these pieces onto the leather, cut them out, and start making this wallet. I chose some uh, unfinished harness from Wicked and Craig for this project. Um, it's kind of similar to the Baker leather. Um, just got that kind of wild swans vibe, nice, high quality veg tan that's tough. Let's get to scribing and cutting. And this wallet is gonna be uh, fully lined, so I'm going to make two pieces of everything, and then glue them together. I'm cutting everything slightly oversized because I need to split it down. And when you split, you can kind of change the dimensions a little bit. Alright, we've got everything all scribed. Time to cut. This is some super thick leather, so uh, definitely going to be some huffing and puffing going on. Time to split. All right, we got everything split. Let's start sticking stuff together. Now it's time to scribe and cut everything out. Let's drop this bad boy up. Get it nice and sharp. Let's cut. Beautiful curve. Another beautiful curve.
let's work on finishing these edges. Get them nice and beveled and creased and burnished. Man, that crease really, really tidies up these edges. All right, we got our card assembly backing tops all stitched. Just finishing and burnishing up the edges. Then it'll be time to glue everything together and start assembling the wallet in 3D. Now it's time to scribe everything and scuff. You have to scuff the nice grain side off the leather so the glue will stick. Make sure we scuff three millimeters inside of that both sides. Okay, it's time to glue everything together. We've got our T-slot sewn down on the bottom. Very important to do that before you put your bottom pocket on because you can't get to it once you put your bottom pocket on. Let's go ahead and burn these threads down. Card stack's looking pretty good. Do our last bit of gluing. All right, stick everything together. Let's trim all of our edges flush. All right, looking good. Now ready to scribe and stitch. Here we are all stitched up. Um, I gotta say I'm pretty uh, pretty thrilled with the way this came out. Usually when I first try an item it doesn't come out nearly as nice as this. Uh, yeah, I'll be honest. So if you noticed when I was sewing the perimeter stitch, I was using a different sewing machine. That was a Seiko TE6. And that's actually what Wild Swans uses to sew their wallets. I would have sewn these stitch runs on the TE6 as well. Except I was out of my size 14 needles that I needed to uh, sew that thin stuff with so I could hide the loop. Now I'm going to go on to beveling and burnishing and this wallet will be finished very shortly. This is the nerve-wracking part. Things can go very sideways once you start playing with dye, especially dark, dark black dye. It can really ruin your piece. Just gonna 
takes a steady hand and a bit of confidence. The longer and smoother the strokes you make, the better the end result. All right, I'm gonna let these edges dry, then give it one more burnish. Just gonna knock this final burnish out, and we'll be all done. I'm very happy with the way this wallet came out. It looks very wild Swansea and a lot like the original that I was trying to mimic. If you would like to learn how to make whatever you want, whenever you want, please click the link below in the description and sign up for my email list to be alerted for when my online classes drop. Also, if you wouldn't mind, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already for new leather content every week. Caca!